I read something once that the first group of astronauts that walked on the moon, when they came home, they had psychological problems. And one of them became religious, one had alcoholism, one of them depression. You've been in the damn moon and you're looking down at the earth and that changes your perspective. And the world wasn't the same for those people anymore after that. I think sometimes the same thing is true of armed combat. This experience is so extreme, you don't look at the world the same way after that. My name is Donald Ray Elverd. I achieved the rank of Sergeant E-5 during the Vietnam War. Thomas Frame, Staff Sergeant, and Vietnam. My name is uh, Abe Cardenas. My rank is E-4. Uh, my name is Gary Young. My, my rank in Vietnam was Spec 5 E-5. Tom and Abe and Gary were part of my infantry unit up in the uh, Ben Cui rubber plantation in August of 1968. And that particular morning that we went out on the 21st, I was told to carry a lot of uh, extra medical supplies. There was people throwing up because of the fear factor, uh, but, we, but we went out. We left the camp, we go down a trail, we go into the rubber plantation. The guys are kind of fanning out, starting to go into the woods. We knew way before that they, uh, the signs were there. You know, you knew the rubber plantations there, there, there's no workers there. And when you enter the rubber plantation, you, you can feel it, you, you know, you say, this is no good. The guys are pulling back out of the woods and I start firing the 50 caliber into the wood line. Well, as a medic, you generally did not, did not get involved in the firefight as far as picking up a weapon or, or you know, firing it, you know, stuff like this. Uh, usually when something happens, you're on the alert for your guys, uh, trying to remember where they're at, you know, just in case something happened. But I had to wait for them to get closer to me because I'm kind of shooting over their heads. So I waited and <clears throat> they shot me off the top of that track. It got to the point where the noise was so loud that you couldn't even hear yourself think. It was just so loud. At that point, you know, I, I ran out of ammo and I had an, uh, I had a, a beautiful spiritual awakening at that time, you know. Up until I heard the report, I didn't have any idea how many were wounded, but we lost almost everybody in, in my platoon, except for three or four of us. I was saved, I was saved. My husband suffers with PTSD. I knew that he was in a very bad battle on August 21st, and that's about the only thing I knew. It wasn't discussed. He probably suffered longer with it before I realized. Along the way, I've had to learn things, and sometimes I don't have my facts right but this is the, the event that... <sighs> this is the event that my husband lives with every day. The 
the thing that will always stick in my mind was anybody left out there alive. That will stick with me forever. There's not a day goes by I don't think about those men. There's not a day that goes by. When the post-traumatic stress disorder started to surface, I had friends that would say to me, oh, you should just leave him. And I'm there, I, I can't. I married him, I took those vows. You wouldn't leave somebody if they had a physical Ill illness. This is a, a illness that you can't see from the outside. It was tough. I think that's when I discovered how strong a person I am. The other guys that got shot up in the Ben Cooey in there, they had experiences and they saw things I didn't see. When I meet these guys and I talk to them, to tell you the truth, I'm glad I got shot, <laughs> and I'm glad I got shot early on so I didn't see what was coming next for the rest of them. The only times he ever mentioned talking about Vietnam is maybe when a movie would come on and he'd say, that didn't really happen. That's Hollywood. After we got married in 69, I remember he brought home a little box and had pictures and he tore them up and threw them away. I mean, for years and years, I, was, I, I didn't know what PTSD was, first off. But uh, when I started hearing about it, I was in denial. I think the nightmares are in there and the thoughts are in there, but they don't manifest very often and I think they come out more in temper. So I went to the VA and made an appointment for, for a psychiatrist. I didn't want to be there and so I was very curt in my answers and uh, he goes we've got a, a test program going on and he goes I'd like to try this on you. He goes it's hypnosis. I said well I don't take I've never been hypnotized I don't think you can do it. Well, about 15, 20 minutes later, I'm coming out <laughs> from under the hypnosis. And this little female psychiatrist bawling her eyes out. And that scared me, right? I didn't know what was going on at that point in time. So the guy picked up, they had a legal pad with about four or five pages of notes on there. And he started bringing stuff out that I had literally pushed down in my memory. I did not remember them. And he goes, you have an extreme case of PTSD. I don't know how to help him. I'm not a doctor. I don't have any background in psychology. And I can't because I wasn't there. So Holy Spirit, do that work. And God, today, God, we thank you for what you have blessed us with, Lord. God, even as the ushers would come forward. We plan to be married. We are already dating for four years. But in June, my husband received an order to be in the service. And we went around the, around the, the building, and I told Chacha, you know, I told you once, and I'm going to tell you again. I said, look at the clock right now. You know, I depart at 8 o'clock. I said, you know, a year from now, a year from today, December the 17th. Come and see me. When he left, I, I am pregnant. And when he's coming back, my daughter was three months. Everything, you know, was beautiful. The only difference that I noticed is that my husband was not the same. Really was another person.
I, I came back. We got married. I'm restless. I am restless. I, you know, I got a job the next day. I don't like my job. I don't like my hometown. I miss Vietnam. No. I miss my brother. I miss Vietnam. I began to drink a little bit too much. On the last days, I was getting very violent. violent very. I was knocking doors. My wife is running. My kids are running. I want to continue the argument. I knocked the doors down. That day I say, I can't no more. I can't. I need to leave. I need to leave my husband alone. I don't have the spirit, and I don't have nobody around me. They had the spirit. How you can help a Vietnam veteran? How you can help a soldier? Well, it took more than two more years. I said, this is it. Lord, this is the last day for me drinking. You know, I have never drank a beer 27 years. Our life changed, but he's not the way that he was before. But still, he is in Vietnam. Still, he lives in Vietnam. Still, he lives with his brothers that he make in Vietnam. But I feel my life is not dangerous that was before. But he is still in Vietnam. If you got to choose between pain and numb, I'm going with numb, and that's what a lot of people do. They're carrying some very painful things around in there. They will numb through distraction, through workaholism, through this, through that, through all kinds of other things, but most frequently uh, alcohol, drugs. You have a call at no expense to you from Arthur an inmate at Anoka County Jail. I mean, that's the worst thing that ever happened to me. And, uh, that, I, I, you know, there's not much I can say about that because uh, we are being monitored. What really played a role in that was my health. My character. I was under radiation when that happened. And I was flashing back. PTSD is a natural reaction for an unnatural situation. Vietnam was an injustice. I, uh, Sherry was my best friend. Uh, what happened was uh, a nightmare that I'm never going to wake up from. Looking back, it's unreal, unnatural. It's almost like someone else did it. I suffered years of nightmares. <laughs> And I'm ashamed to say I still have nightmares about Vietnam. Guys like Artie, I doubt if he got anything. They, they didn't get treatment coming home. Uh, diagnosed, write him a check. Diagnose him, write him a check, send him a prescription. That's treatment. I think uh, it has to go a little bit deeper and a little bit more meaningful than that. You know what I think PTSD is at root? 
I think it's a spiritual wound. And I don't think it can be treated with medications necessarily. I think it requires some spiritual healing with people, some meaning making again, some reconnecting with your values and your morals and your ethics and sort of resetting your gyros now that you've sort of seen the other side of life. Don't think it wrong. I'm very proud of my husband. This is probably something that will continue to the day I die. When people ask me, they ask me, you know, when were you in Vietnam? When I was in Vietnam, it was last night. It was this morning, five minutes ago before you asked me. And I would probably go back tonight. Thank you, Sergeant.